I always look at my life in kind of like two phases. Um, one I call just comfortably confused, and then, um, and then it got into being very uncomfortably confused. I got into skateboarding actually in between sixth and seventh grade uh, that summer, um, and. You know, was able to stumble across some tricks and, and progress to a point of being able to get sponsored and turn pro. Um, and I'd say that was, when I turned pro was kind of where it started shifting from comfortably confused to uncomfortably confused. And when I was comfortably confused, it was just like I'd have questions about things like, you know, uh, you know, racism for one. You know, it's just like, wow, you know, my, my ancestors, such a deep history of just being on the wrong end of racism and hate. And so having questions, but not being super content on uh, having answers. Um, once I turned pro and start traveling and um, all of a sudden I'm making money, um, doing what I love to do, I'm, you know, I uh, turned pro right out of, uh, right out of high school. Um, it wasn't until we started traveling and going to these demos and all of a sudden having all this attention drawn to me because of the company that I skate for and the videos that were coming out. And uh, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the pedestal that I was put on because of what I was able to do on a skateboard, basically. And I always knew that it was, um, it just felt wrong, you know. Um, we'd go do these demos and things and it was just people would freak out and wouldn't, didn't have the ability to be normal because they were so, I don't know how you want to say it, just in awe or, um, and I just hated that. Like I knew like, I'm no different than you. I just learned some tricks. Like what do you do? I'm sure you're into something or, you know. And, um, and that was kind of the start of like, Dude, this is weird getting uncomfortable. <laughs> I remember being in Huntington Beach one night and I was living in Corona which was about uh, I want to say an hour away from Huntington. Um, we went to go see a friend's band. We thought it was a friend's band playing at this coffee shop down at the pier, um, Main Street. And uh, it wasn't. It was actually a skinhead band that was playing. And I get there with my Japanese buddy and the, uh, the show had just gotten broken up. And there's a skater that recognized me and he was like, well, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I don't want to see, see my friend's band. And he's like, you better get out of here. You're going to get beat up. And I remember I was like, get beat up, what? And it wasn't about another five minutes bef before I heard, what's up? And I look back and it's like six foot four, 300 pounds, skinhead with two dudes, two skinheads on each side of them, pounding their fists. Just like, you better run, nigga, you better run. Shouldn't you be in Compton or something? And I was like, whoa, okay. And then another dude, not even those five dudes, another dude from nowhere comes running after me. So then I see him and I just start taking off. And I remember I was like, okay, I gotta go into the neighborhoods where they can't see me. And I'm already thinking, okay, I'm already thinking I'm gonna lose them. It's like, how am I gonna get back to my friends, you know? So I'm cutting corners, I'm cutting corners. And after a while, sure enough, I don't see anybody. So then I stop at this one corner and I'm like thinking, okay, how am I gonna get back without those dudes seeing me? And as I'm standing there, a truck's driving up and it's all these skinheads in the back of the truck and they're all pointing at me. Looked behind me and there was a door open and I ran inside and it was a community center and they were having a birthday party, but it was uh, like a Latin community or Hispanic or something, and they didn't speak English. And I ran in just freaking out, like these guys are after me, they wanna kill me, they wanna kill me. They didn't understand, they just see a frantic black dude run through the door. Um, they see the skinheads come to the door and then they got it, you know? And when I seen them come to the door, it was, I made a beeline to the back. But it's crazy because that split second when I saw them kind of come to the door and then when I decided to run in the back, um, 
the hate that I saw in their eyes, you know, and the adrenaline. And it was like, I remember just thinking like, man, I've never seen these dudes before in my life. And they want to kill me, you know? Um, and that really stuck with me, you know? Just being so tripped out on like how somebody can have so much hatred, you know, for, for this, you know, color of my skin. And so it says no one comes to Jesus lest the Father draws him, you know. Just, he started engineering the circumstances in my life to start drawing me and start zeroing it in. So yeah, it wasn't until this trip to Amsterdam to where, um, yeah, it was kind of, it was the point of surrender for me, you know. Um, you know, I'd been to Red Light District so many years before this trip, before I was seeking for truth and just thought nothing of it, laughing at the red light district, laughing at the girls in the, in the windows and the whole scenario there. Um, but this time the climate was different. The climate wasn't different there, the climate was different in my heart. <laughs> um, the Lord was bringing me out of the darkness and I was starting to see that this is wrong. You know how it says in the Bible, it says he put within uh, the hearts of every person the knowledge of eternity. You know, I feel like that being uncomfortable was that, what he's put in everybody that just, there was this sense that I had that, man, this isn't it. There's something else. Um, I always liken it to, there's so many times I've gone on a road trip and, and I'm packing and I'm like, okay, I hope I'm not forgetting something. You're like, okay, and you just keep going, and then the drive to the airport, you're just like, oh, what did I forget, what did I forget, oh well. And then once I'm on the plane, I'm like, oh, I forgot my skateboard. You know what I mean? It's that, I had that nagging feeling my whole life, I should say. It was that knowing like, there's something else, this isn't it, this can't be it. I just remember towards the end of the night, it was like one second I didn't know and the next I knew. And when I knew, it was so clear. It was just like, duh, my grandmother was right. It's Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the light. And I was just like, I'm just going to follow Jesus. For me, Buddha didn't show up. Muhammad didn't show up. Nobody else showed up, and I needed help, and I was sincere, and Jesus has showed up. That night was huge, man. I always say it, it was like I was carrying the heaviest backpack, you know, and it's like that night I got to like take it off. And I knew I was, I was in good hands, and there was a, there was a peace that came from, from surrendering and calling on his name to save me.